Hi, and welcome to another assignment. This is going to be on select color range and how amazing that is. And I'm going to warn you, don't overuse this. And I'm going to show you um, an example of what color range is right now. And I have a project that I want you to do for me and to turn in so I can make sure you understand the process because the process and how to do color range is very important. Um, this is a clicky copy of the reference that I'm clicking on right now. And you can see, if I turn it off, that I've already painted just the solid shapes. Okay, I've already painted it. So I have in here, from hood to all the way to this white layer in the background here, um, I have these painted layers, which I'm just going to turn off and then I'll show you how I did this. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the reference and turn on the white bottom layer. So all I did was, and I'm taking the path palette over here and to show you, I cut some very simple paths. Do you see that path there that's just for the black of the window? Then I have just the window path. Then I have the outer metal path. Then I have the hood. So all I did was use these to create these shapes. So let me um, pull this down a little bit, hold the command or control key and click away from that so it turns the path off for now. And what I did was I used those paths to paint a solid color here and I'm turning on the clicky copy so you can see that I started with just a gray shape. Now why am I showing you this? Because I want you to see that what a, how amazing Photoshop is. Okay, so I have a solid black and you can see in the solid black in my theory of you work your way from your big shapes to your small shapes, you can see this black surrounding the whole windshield. And I'll turn off the clicky copy so you can see now how I'm actually painting the blue as a solid value, right? Just a solid value. Then I'm painting the feathering of the dark just to kind of match the window. You can see what I'm doing. I used a bigger brush. I used these paths and I created that little shine on both sides. Then I created this solid hood with a little bit of vignette on the bottom of darkness. Now, how do you use color range? Well, I'm not going to show you on this file. I am going to show you on another file in a second, but I wanted you to see in the window clouds, let me let me turn this off and show you the small color reference and then turn on the window clouds. See how amazing color range can be? I used these colors here on this, this, and this, and you'll know how to do it in a few minutes. It's super easy to create these channels because channels, when you command or control click on a channel, turns into a selection, then you can just paint. So. In order to really show you what I'm doing, let me click up to the RGB image so I'm not clicked on a channel. But I wanted you to also see, if I turn off this little reference, that I did the same thing in the hood. I actually matched up. Let me turn the clicky copy on and off. It's not perfect, but my goodness, I could paint this in a few minutes. Did you hear that? In a few minutes using color range. When do you use color range? This is a perfect example, and it's why I started with this file. You use color range not to paint, how do I say this, um, finished products. When something is as arbitrary as clouds reflecting on a windshield or clouds reflecting on a hood or a person reflecting on something or water um, that has so many different variations, yes, you can use color range. So I'm going to show you an exact example of color range. This is going to be in the asset folder in case you want to try this one after you do the one I'm going to show you right now. So this is the one that I want you to actually paint. I want you to paint this headlight. This headlight has been refracted and has reflections that make it non-engineering. You cannot color range something like a grill or you cannot color range something like that mirror but you can color range something that has arbitrary shapes. It's very important that you don't overuse this. I would never use color range to paint the sheet metal. I would use color range to paint this light because it's arbitrary shapes. Do you understand? So I'm going to also show you, so I'll start, you're going to have this file exactly the way that I have it here with Brian's solution for this. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the bottom original. This is painted what I'm showing you right here, and I'll start on it in a few seconds, is painted. 
This is the upper photographic reference. This is my painted version, which will only take me, I'm going to do it right in front of you, okay? And this is what I want you to do to get into the process of it. But let me show you one other thing. In this face illustration, look at how I painted this young lady's face and, and everything with just Photoshop paint and you can see how in here I have all of these paths that go through painting her face. Now I used color range on the reflections in her eyes. But you also can use color range on an amazing thing here which is called texture on her face. It's not called texture, it's just texture on her face. Do you see how I turned on the freckles? Because I have a freckles layer. You see how amazing that is? Well, how did I do that? Well, I had the clicky reference layer on and I clicked to it and then I created, which you'll know how to do in a few minutes again, these freckle channels. It only took me a few seconds because all I did was I drop a color and I let Photoshop create these. Now, just so you remember, in a channel, when you see black, that's where color um, goes. Okay, so where you see a hole, the hole turns into a selection. Where you see white, white is a protective thing. It doesn't allow for color to go and it's not part of the selection. Gray is part of the selection, but only in the amount of percentage that the gray is and black is totally part of the selection. So what I'm trying to say is, if I control or command click on this channel right here, you can see it's turned into a selection. Now I'm gonna turn this off so I can show you, whoops, I have to click back to the RGB image, okay? I can show you that in order to paint those freckles right here, and let me hit Command or Control H to temporarily hide that, that's exactly how I turned on and did those freckles right there. Now, you're going to understand in a few minutes or in a little while how to do this process. And I realize this is complicated, okay, when you look at it in this amount of detail. But we're not going to start with that. So I'm going to close this and not save. I'm going to close the car if I can go to it. Um, you see how my tabs are closed? I'm going to remind you that if you go Command or Control tilde, it takes you, tilde is the key above the tab key. You can go to another file and I'm going to hit Command or Control W to close this one and not save it. Now we're going to start on this right now. What I want to do first, and I want you to start exactly where I'm going to start, is by me showing you what's in my Brian um, folder that has 12 layers in it and I've created a folder called your light that's where I want you to start so I'll pretend I'm you and I'll do the entire thing okay with you and it will not take long you just have to be patient and you have to follow the process and stay organized so I'm opening up about 15 layers that are is that's in Brian's light and I'm going to remove all of these layers down to let me turn off that fix layer right there down to the solid black shape. Now I only have two paths. Okay, I have a black path here, I call it black, and I have an inner path right there. But if I make a selection of this, let me turn off that layer, you can see there's the selection and here is my reference clicky copy. So you can see it's the outer clicky copy. Now I'm going to show you why I made this black path, which you have to. You can use mine right there because it's going to be in this file, which is fine for you to use, but you can take a pen and draw out that big shape. Okay, it's not hard. Now I'm going to show you the process right now on how to use color range. Now. I'm going to click up to the clicky copy when I want to get a color. Now, but um, what I should have done is click on this path here to turn it off and show you the layers as I started to show you from the bottom. So I'm not going to show you this yellowy fill here. I'm just going to show you this. The first thing I did, and my layers are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this was 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so I'm going to do that right in front of you, as I said. But here's number one. Look at how it goes on there. Number two, number three, number four, five, six. What are those? What are the numbers? Well, they're values from dark to light. That's it. They're just values that you can break down from dark to light, ending with white. And of course, if it has color, you're going to handle those separately, just like I clicked those, the yellow. This one's named eight yellow. Let me zoom in. This one's named nine orange. This one's named 10 red. Okay. And now I have 11 here. Now to get rid of that little black that's around there, that's not in the photographic reference that's up above. Okay. I made a little fuzzy fix right there and I'll show you because every single time you do color range, you're going to need one layer or two that I call fix layers, but you will watch me do it. So I am going to simply, let me turn both of these on and I am going to simply close Brian's layer and turn it off. Now this is where you're going to begin. So your first step is to turn on your light layer. Let me make these, um, I want to see if I can make the options bigger. Oh, I already did. I can't make a folder bigger, but I can make the layers inside bigger. So watch what I do first. I'm going to make 12 layers inside. Um, whoops, I did that wrong. I was making 12 layers, but not inside your light. So click to the your light folder and just click this 12 times. Oops, not going in there. Why did that not go in there? Okay, if that's actually... Um, I with that folder selected I should be able to add a layer all right it's not adding them in there right now so you're going to have to drop the first one in there look what I'm doing drop the first one in there I'm gonna just now keep on clicking with layer three I don't care what number it is at the moment but I'm, I'm gonna call that my first layer so here's two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve now this is what I want you to do Double click the bottom one and call it base. Okay, just call it base. Now, one at a time, double click the next one up and call it one, hit the return key. Two, hit the return key. Three, hit the return key. And I may pause at times, I'm not sure, but I'm just now naming number four. Look at how fast I can name number five, name number six. And remember, these are going to be colors on these layers working from dark to light. Okay, that's it. So you don't have to worry about anything right now, meaning accuracy. Just make sure you're naming all your layers. We're going to probably add a few more layers in there. And this is 10 and then 11 is going to be the top one. And I am going to put one more layer on top and just call it fix. So please, let's talk all on this again. Let's have a base layer, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and fix, okay, or 10, 11, and fix. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you have 10 or 11 layers in there, 11 or 12 layers in there, okay? Now, we are going to be flipping back and forth between turning this reference layer on right there, okay? And let me turn off this little one here, although you can turn it on. This is how I did the little one, okay? This is how I created the small pick. I used the M key for marquee, and I made a marquee box around that light, and I just made sure that the selection was, you know, had enough room on it, and meaning it wasn't cropping off that little lamp right there. And I'm clicking on the clicky copy and I hit Command or Control J and then I'm going to name this one Small Pick 2. Then I'm just going to um, turn off the clicky copy at the moment so you can see that I have that right there, right? And hit Control or Command T, not hold the Shift key and just move that. So just get it out of there so I can put it above so when I actually work on mine, you can see that that little thing isn't in the way. So I'm going to hit the V key and just move it up a little bit more because I'm selected on that layer. And that's how I did the little copy of that. Okay, that's fine. So I'm fine with that. Now I'm going to turn off the clicky copy and we're going to click. This is your first step. 
click to your base layer. Thank you. Command or control click the path. All right, command or control click the path. Up here called black. Now, try to zoom in or, or turn on the clicky copy. You're going to get very used to this and I'm going to zoom in and grab the darkest color. Now how am I zooming? I'm using Option or Alt, middle mouse button. Okay, now hit the B key, hold Alt or Option and sample that black right there. Now sample it. Just use the eyedropper where I am, anywhere in that dark. Okay, now I'll back off. Turn off the clicky copy. Now remember, in Photoshop, you need to be on the correct layer every time before you do something. So let's click to the base layer and hit Alt Backspace or Option Delete. And now we have our first layer. Now let's start in on what I refer to as the 90% black. Now, see these channels that are over here? I don't want you to use them. I don't want to use them. So I can't um, delete a channel other than one at a time. So I'm going to go through and take away all these extra channels, which is what I want you to do right now. Don't panic. And right when we're done, we're going to save as. So you can always reopen this file and have all of these channels there in case you need to refer to them. So I haven't saved the file yet. Neither have you. Okay, don't hit Control or Command S to save. Now, we're going to add all new channels. Let's start with our very first one, but the first thing I just told you to do is save as. Don't hit save. Now let's save as, and I'm going to call this number two. So you just put your name in there and um, in fact, I should say this is, I, I'm going to pretend I'm a student. Brian Sorio, that's my student name. I will, now I don't even need this one. And it's color range. Okay, so I'm just going to take away the word file. Brian Sorio color range PSD is perfect. Now, let me just hit save. And now I can always open that other one up, right? Okay. Now I want to show you something right now which could cause a problem. Um, with color range and it's just a typical thing okay so I'm gonna turn off the base layer just for now but I'll turn it back on in a second but I'm gonna click to the clicky copy now I wanna hit the B key please do click to your clicky copy you have to click to it and it doesn't have to be perfect but locate the darkest color that's in here that isn't black it's a probably right there. Do you see that color? So I'm going to hold Alt or Option and I'm going to sample that color. That is going to become our number one color to be painted on the number one layer. Now, let's color range this. So I'll show you how to color range. Now, I'm going to make a mistake. I am not going to make a selection of the black. Not. And I'm going to enter color range right now. And I want you to see how tiny tiny if I sample that color see how the whole car is there let me show you uh, I'll sample any color I just want to get right there okay do you see how this big this picture which I can't make any bigger in the color range window I can't uh, two things I need you to pay attention to leave it on selection please don't go to image leave it on selection from the this for this whole assignment and leave it on sampled colors and I'll explain to you what fuzziness means in a few seconds okay I'll, just, I'll explain but I want the color range window to concentrate on the lamp not the whole car so I'm gonna cancel it so here's what we're gonna do every single time before you enter color range make a selection of the black now you there's only three steps to this there really is only three steps you will hear them so many times that you will just start reciting them. So the first thing is hold command or control, make a selection of the black. Now, now, enter color range. And I have to tell you something. We are not going to use the eyedropper. Did you hear that? Okay. Color range has its own eyedropper. Now repeat that. Color range has its own eyedropper. So when I bring up this window, 
I want to zoom in and find the 90% or 90 or 85% dark. So I just clicked it. Do you see how I've got that dark right in that selection? Perfect. Fuzziness means the higher the number, the more it grabs the hues that are percentage points away from the one you grabbed. So if you go smaller, it pretty much only grabs that 90% value. If you go somewhere around 80 to 100, and that's where I want you to kind of leave it except for a few special moments, I want you to leave it between 80 and 90, okay? So I'm gonna say, okay, now I have my first channel. Okay, that's my first saved selection that I'm going to do. What are we going to name this channel? We are going to go to select and save selection as number one. So that's going to be on our number one layer. Now here's the difficult thing that um, Photoshop has done. We want to save before we paint. We want to save the color. Now Photoshop made it a lot more difficult to save colors, but I'm going to show you, and I'll probably make a mistake here and there, but I'm going to show you how to do this. So in the foreground color, do you see it right there, is our 90% dark. I don't have to label it 90% dark, but I'm going to label it number one. Okay. So I want to find, well, I won't go in there, I, I'll say what I was going to say in a minute. So let's first save this color we need to make a new folder so click the folder at the bottom of swatches and call it light so you know that it's supposed to go in there and leave it selected now we're going to hit the color swatch so we're going to add a color swatch now we're going to name it number one and that's the technique that's it now do you see how that first one went in the light look and i'm going to close it and open it now that's what I want to do this entire time. I want to leave light selected when we save our color. So I'm going to find a place to put this uh, without it getting in the way. So now um, I am not going to paint yet. Okay, I want to show you at one process how to paint this. So now we are going to find the number two color. So here's how the process works again. You click to your clicky copy, okay? You make a selection of the black path right there. You enter color range. In color range now, I found a 90% color, correct? Now I want to find somewhere around a 70% color. So do you see where I'm clicking right there with the color range eyedropper? Just click. Now, I'm going to leave this at about 80. Now do you see how it grabbed a new selection right there? So let's click OK. See how I did that? Select and save selection as what? As what? Number two. And now we save the color as number two. So I have to click to my folder, click the new color swatch, name it number two, and say OK. Do you see how we're starting to have our color scale here? Okay, now let's do the next one. I'm going to leave it on the clicky copy, correct? Make a selection of the black path, good. Enter color range. Now we're trying to find about a 60% dark. So let's just find it. Let's just locate it. I think about a 60% dark would be, since we grabbed this one, let's grab this one and if we don't like it we can always redo it it's not that big a deal and you'll know if you have something working in a second I'll show you how you would know how you have something working so I'm gonna click this color right there I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna save the selection as what number three good and make sure you're clicked on the light um, folder hit the color swatch button, the new color swatch, name it number three, and this is how you find out. I'm going to click away. Do you see how those are three pretty good color scales? This one's not too, I mean it goes lighter, darker, and darkest, right? So now we're going to do number four. I want to find six values. 
down to white. Did you hear me? Six, where seven is going to be the white. And it's okay if I do six values or seven or eight, but I don't want any more than that. So now, what's the, what's the process? We make a selection by command or control clicking the black. Good, good. Enter color range. Use the color range eyedropper to locate a 50% value, which I'm just going to click right there. See in that light? See right here? I'm just going to click that value right there. Click OK. Let's go to select and save selection as number what? Number four. Now we save the color. Remember, you have to click to the light folder. Click the new color swatch button and name it number four. And now look at how nice this looks. Look at how good this looks. It's a good color range scale. Now, what's the process? We're still selected on the clicky copy. Good, that's the reference layer, right? We are going to make a selection of the black path by clicking on its icon, Command or Control, click. Good, now enter color range. Now we find a 30% value, which is somewhere around this value right there. I think that's going to be good. And click OK. You almost can't make a mistake, okay, because it's going to look pretty decent. Now what do you do? Select where, where, yes, save selection, name it number what, number five. And now we go click on the light folder, click on the new color swatch button right there and name it what, what number, number five, which is going to be painted on the five layer, number five layer. Now look at how nice that looks. Look at how good that's feeling. Okay, now I really just need a lighter brown and then I'm going to get the white and see if that works. So I don't even have to deselect because when I make a selection of the black path, I can do the next one, which is going to be number six, which is about a 20% value. Okay, 15 or 20% value. So now let's enter color range. I'm, I'm going to double check that I command or control clicked on the black, which I just did. Select color range. Let us now find about a 15% value, which is right about there. A little bit lighter than that, I think. Right about there. And now let's click OK. And now save selection right there as number 6. And save the color. How do I save the color? Brian, click to your folder click here and let's put it as six and then let's examine if we did a good job. Those two are kind of close to each other. I'm not sure that I like what I did right there. I think I want a lighter value. If yours is good, that's fine, but don't you think these are kind of close together? So I'm going to click on that color swatch and delete it. Okay, I'm deleting the color swatch. Now, I want to delete the channel too because I'm not happy with it. Did you hear what I said? So now let's do it again and get a lighter value. So we command click the black path. We enter color range. Whoops, I didn't do that. Command click it, okay. Enter color range. I almost made a mistake there because I didn't command click on the, I command clicked on the, na on the name black. I didn't command click on the icon. That's what happened. Now, let's grab this lighter value about right there and click OK. Now let's see how that's going to work. So select Save Selection. Let's redo number 6. Let's click on the folder, click on this button and redo number 6. And now let's examine. Now isn't that better than what we had? Now let's get a white. Now white is going to be number 7. So I'm automatically going to double click. Whoops, I didn't click on that very well. Something happened on my other screen. I'm going to click this and just label it white since I already know that number seven is going to be white. I think you should do that. But how do we work color range? We have to click on the clicky copy, correct? Command or control click the black path, enter color range, and now we grab the white. So let's back off and grab the lightest value that I can find in here, which is probably right there. And now I'm going to raise up this to about 90 to 100. So far it's been about 85. And I'm going to click OK. 
Now let's save the selection, whoops, save the selection as number seven white, just so I, I don't know, I'm just doing that. Whoops, I spelled white wrong and I spelled it correct. Now let's save the color. So we click on the light folder, we click on the new color swatch and we name it seven white and we save our file. You better save your file, Brian. Now, we have to examine other things. Okay, I see three levels of orange. Okay, so we're going to need, number eight is going to be, um, I'm gonna call it um, pink one. So eight is pink one. Nine is going to be, I'm just gonna keep on calling it pink. Two. And then I have a little trick to do this. And then, um, meaning to not have to type so much, we're going to go pink three. And then this one here is going to be yellow one. See, you can see two yellows, right? There's a light yellow and a pretty intense yellow. I need a new layer. So I'm going to name this number 12, yellow two. And that's good. Now let's go down and see where I ended. So now I need to click to the clicky copy. Let's grab this light pink. Okay, so how do you do it? Remember, you make a selection of the black. It's not hard. You enter color range. I'm gonna grab this light pink right there. I did right there. And let's call it, watch this. I'm going to take and double click this and hit Command C, Control C. You see how I did that? Isn't that cool? Now let's go to select color, um, save selection. Watch this. Control V or Command V. Now I actually didn't have to type it. Do you understand? Now let's click on the light folder in swatches. Click on the new color swatch. Just hit Control V and I have now the same color. See it right over there? The same color is named for the same channel, which is going to be painted on the same layer. You follow? Okay, let's keep on going. Let's command click the black. Let's enter color range. And you're gonna be so surprised on how fast, couldn't find color range for a second. So now you're gonna be surprised on how fast this gets to be painted. So let's click this number two color. Let me go a little bit more intense like this. And let's click okay. Now I'm gonna double click the number two pink and hit control C or command C. Let's go to select color, um, save selection and let's go control V or command V. Now I have it right there and then again, click on the folder. I don't like how I, it becomes deselected all the time if you know what I mean. But now let's click the new color swatch, command or control V and click okay. I'm saving the file again, which I think you should do. Now let's go grab that really intense, I may need a fourth one, but let's grab the really intense orange, okay? So I'm gonna double click this already, which is the name of the next pink or orange. You can name it anything you want. I'm gonna hit Command C or Control C. I'm now going to Command click on the black channel. You have to do that before you enter color range, correct? And now let's grab this intense value which I think I'm going to grab it right here. No, let me grab it right somewhere. I'm not sure. I might grab it right there and then raise this up a little bit so I get more of it. You see, I'm up to 121 because um, the more that I go up on fuzziness, the more it lets me grab other colors around that color. You follow? So let's hit OK. Let's save the selection as Control V, which is the pink number three, and save the color. So I have to click there and click right there and Control V or Command V. And now look at how I have a really good thing going on here. Okay, it's going to work. Now, um, I may need to come back with something and I am going to have to come back with something at the end, which will make it really cool. But now let's go yellow one. So I'm going to double click the layer number 11 yellow one and copy it. 
right, copy it, right. Command click or control click on the black path right on the icon. Now I can enter color range and now I can grab the first yellow. So there is my first yellow right there and I'm going to leave it at 121, okay, um, and click OK. Now let's save the selection. It gets to be pretty boring as control V. That's cool. See down here we have it all in order in our channels, right? Okay, let's click on the light, click on the new icon for the color swatch, hit Command or Control V. There's our yellow number one. I'm going to double click this yellow number two. Okay, hit the return key real quick. Command click on the black path. I know that gets to be boring. Select color range. Try to keep your, your focus on what you need and let's grab this darker yellow orange. OK, and click OK. Now let's select and save selection as Command V. Save the color. Look, I'm not even going to tell you what I just did there. Yes, I will. I clicked on the folder. I clicked on the new color swatch and now I'm good to go. Now, um, I'm pretty much ready to go on the whole file right now. OK, so I'm going to save it now. I'm going to have to do something at the end to give it a little bit more intensity. But let me move this up and move this down so I can get to my color swatches. You see how I just did that? Okay. Because I need access to the swatches. I need access to the channels. So I'm going to turn this off now. Now I have my little copy up here to look at just to make sure that I'm doing a good job. Okay. So let's go down here and turn on your base value. Okay, now watch the process. This is going to happen very fast. Click to number one layer. Command or control click on the icon for the channel. Click on the, the color that is not the base color. It's this one right there. And hit Option Delete or, or Alt Backspace. Okay, I did put it in there. It's there. You can see it. I'm turning off this for now. I'll turn on the base layer in a minute. Let's do the next one just so you can see it go in. Click to number two, layer. Command or control click number two channel. Click number two color and fill. Option delete or um, alt backspace. Click to number three. Command or control click on the channel. Click the color. Option Delete or Alt Backspace. Number four, make sure you're cho switching, choosing your layer first. Command click, make it into a selection. Command or Control click on channel four. Grab the fourth color. Option Backspace. Number five, Command click on number five or Control click. Click number five color. Are you on number five's layer, Brian? Yes. Option delete. Click on number six. Let's command click on number six on the channel or control click. Let's click the color. Now make sure you're on the layer, Brian. Alt backspace or option delete. Click to the white. I'm now going to turn on this. I'm going to hit Command Control D so you can see how I'm doing so far. I'm on the white layer. Let's now Command click or Control click the white channel. Let's choose the white color. Option Backspace. I'm going to go to the pink number one. I'm going to Command click or Control click pink channel number one click the first pink color. Um, I'll hit, um, I'm just going to go option delete. Now let's um, click to number two pink layer. Let's command click number two pink channel or control click. Let's click the more, um, the number two pink color. And again I'll fill. You know fill is option delete or alt backspace click to pink 3. Let's command click pink 3 or control click. Let's click to this darker pink. Option delete 
and now you can see how I'm starting. Look at how I'm really starting to get this feel. Okay, click to yellow one. Let's command click yellow one over here or control click on the icon. Click to the first yellow color. Make sure you're on the right layer. If you're not, can make, can control Z back if you make a mistake and redo it. Now I have the yellow going in. Let's click to number two. Let's um, command click the last channel that I have. I'm going to create another one in a minute. And let's click to this orange color here, right there. Make sure you're on the layer, Option Delete or Alt Backspace. Now, do you see these little black holes that are there? Well, I'm going to zoom in to the black hole. I'm going to turn on the clicky copy. And I'm going to grab, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to grab the color that is mostly in the black hole. It's going to be like this color right here. Okay, so now I'm backing off. Look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this first fix one and move it all the way down. That's what I want you to do. All the way down to between the base and the number one layer. Now I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off the clicky copy. I don't even have to save this color. I'm going to make a paintbrush. I'm going to make a big B. I'm hitting the B key. I'm going to make my brush extremely big. See it? See it roll over there? Go up to flow and make sure you're painting only at about 10 on the flow. Please make your flow 10. Thank you. Hit the return key. Right hand click and make sure you're all the way soft. Right hand click <clears throat> in the brush and make sure you're all the way soft. I'm going to hit the return key. Now, I am going to make a selection of the black. Okay, that's what I want you to do. Now, what I should do, so you see what I'm doing. I don't have to turn off all these layers, but I'm going to so that you can see what I'm doing. I know that the area that I needed to fix was in this general area. So do you see how I'm just painting that orange like this? Now I'm going to control Z back. Okay, I'm not going to have it there. So I'm control Zing back. So you know that layer is going one above the base layer. Say yes. Okay, so I'm going to command Z back. Now I'm going to do it again and again so it's not there. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on all the layers. But I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to paint this like this on that fix layer getting rid of all those little black holes and you can see how I've done a pretty good job on this now I need to put a fix layer uh, above there's two fix layers that I need one I'm gonna say light fix and one I'm going to say dark fix and this is what I want you to do. Click to your light fix. I can almost guarantee that you're going to have the same issue I did. Okay? Turn on your clicky copy. Let us command click the black path. Good. Now I can enter color range. Now I'm going to go zoom in and grab this color right here. You see it right there? That color. I'm going to click OK. I am going to turn off the clicky copy. Now this is what I'm going to do. I am going to hit Command or Control H, which temporarily hides the selection but doesn't turn it off. I, I want the selection lines to not be visible. Now, would you please watch what's going to happen? Let me double click the swatches just so you can see them. Watch how when I paint this, it's going to brighten all of this up. Now, understand that my selection is still active. Did you hear what I said? My selection is still active. Now, I want to move over here and paint it over here as well. So I had to come back with a fix light. See that? That's the light fix that I wanted. 
that's the light fix that works. Now I'm going to remind you what a layer mask is. I think, and I'm going to show you, that right in this area that I'm pointing to, right there, right, I have to hit the V key, right there is I put too much paint. I'm not happy with the amount of paint I put in there. So I'm going to Command or Control D to deselect. Good. Never add a layer mask with a selection active. Say it again. Never add a layer mask with a selection active. So now I add a blank white layer mask. If your layer mask has black in it, Command or Control Z back and then deselect and then add it. Now I want to hit the B key, make my brush smaller. I want to paint in black on the layer mask in this area right here. What will black do to the paint on this layer? The answer is it will reduce it. And now I can look at my reference up above and I can restore some of that bottom color. In other words, it's cutting a hole. This black on the layer mask is cutting a hole in that paint, which now makes that look better. Now, I'm going to go to my dark fix. I have to repeat the process. How do I... I, I want to show you where I'm talking about. See next to this lamp, see this nice intense dark that's flowing around that lamp? Okay, I don't have that. Mine looks a little muted. So what I'm going to do is turn on my clicky copy. That's what I want you to do. Turn on your clicky copy for your final dark. Good. Command click the black or control click the black path. Good. Go to your select color range. Zoom in and grab this dark right next to there. Right there. Good. Now I'm going to make it go a little bit smaller. I'm going to go down to about 80 on it. That's what I want you to do. But here's the important thing. Would you please click the foreground color right now? Just please click it, please. And make it blacker towards the bottom right. You don't have to save this color. Do you see how I intensified that? Okay. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to back off. Now I'm not going to back off too far so you can watch. What is the quick key that hides the selection? It's Command or Control H. Now I have to make my brush bigger. So I'm hitting the bracket key to make my brush bigger. Now would you please watch when I paint how I am increasing the dark on the areas that it wants to be increased on. So let me move back so I can see my reference layer. It wants to be increased here. It wants a little bit more pop to the dark here. Look what that's doing. Mine actually is starting to look better, did you hear that, than the original. Now here's what that dark did. See, I'm turning off that, whoops. You know what? Brian made a mistake. <laughs> I can't believe what I did and you probably already knew it. I am so embarrassed, but I'm happy I made the mistake. I just painted on the clicky copy. How bad is that? Not too bad. So I'm going to Command or Control Z back until all the paint is gone from the clicky copy. I am so embarrassed I can't even um, hold my head up. Yes, I can. So now I've Command Z back. Okay, now I can turn a little couple more. Okay, now I can turn off the clicky copy, okay, which is really important. Now, I'm so embarrassed, but hey, that's the way life is. I'm going to hit Command or Control H to show the selection to make sure I still have it. All right, now what should I have done? This is something you're going to do all the time. I should have made sure that I wasn't selected on the clicky copy, but on the dark fix layer. It's a mistake. It's not a big deal. Now, would you watch how my darks are going to intensify on my painted layers? And I don't want to just jam it in there. Remember, I'm only painting at 10. I should probably knock it back to 8%. So I'm gently painting in areas. Now, do you see how I'm adding the darks where I want them? Across the top, across the bottom, inside that lamp right there? Oh, that is so pretty. It's really spectacular, okay? Now that, that is a good depiction of color range. 
All right, here's what the original look like. Here's what mine looks like. I like what I've done. And I want you to see how the power that color range has. Okay, now that you've watched this, you can go ahead and start this file, but I want to see your file. So I want you to save it and then go into the module for color range and upload it to me with your name on the file. I want to see all of your layers and how you handled all of these layers. You may have to do this assignment a couple of times to watch this movie. It gets to be pretty repetitive and I want to see the channels you created, not the ones that came with it. I want you to make your own channels, so make sure you throw those away when you first get the file. I'm going to go to File, Open, Recent, and I'm going to open the one that was this one. Now on this one, do you remember all of these channels that are over here? Throw them away. Okay, I just wanted you to see mine. Now I'm going to go to the other file, so I'm closing this one. So this is how I want it turned in. Okay, you can turn on the, the layer down here if you want, the, the clicky copy, but turn on, look at the original car layer is actually underneath. Now, you're going to ask me, when is this done in industry? Oh my gosh, it's done all the time. Okay, especially for something like this where they want to use um, a regular photo and then vignette or composite um, painted material on top but have it look totally real okay so that's cool here is the light we just turned on okay ours actually looks cleaner and better than theirs okay now let me go to the other file if I still have it open no let me go file open recent to the sky one and now you can see where I got these channels from I actually color ranged let me click up to the RGB image. I actually color ranged three values of gray and three values of gray blue. Do you understand what I mean? What did I do? Did I work from light to dark or dark to light? You're right. I worked from dark to light. So the highest layers are the lightest layers. So you can see here in my upper clouds, see how I'm taking away And there is my overall sheet metal. There's the darkest value, next lightest value, next lightest value, and the lightest value. Actually, I painted um, a little bit more on this side. Now let's go down to the windshield and let's turn those off. Here is the darkest value. See, that doesn't look very good, right? But that's exactly what's there. You see what I'm saying? That's exactly what's there. Next lightest value next lightest value and then the lightest value. You see what I'm saying? Look at how absolutely stunning that is. Oh my gosh, could you paint that by hand? No way. So this is how we paint reflections in windows. We find a good reflection, we find a window that has a good reflection, and we color range it. There's no way to grab those selections. It's amazing how fast you can do something. Let me go back to this file. So that's what I want you to turn in. Okay, I want you to turn in your light. You don't have to delete my layer. Okay, just turn in your light. And thank you for watching, and let's go on to the next assignment.